good afternoon everyone anyone here who was born in the rural areas and then they migrated to the urban areas show of hands please okay anyone whose parents were from the rural background and then they shifted to the cities okay so many of us has some connection with the rural india i was born in the city of mumbai raised in the coastal village of boldi i received my education here in pune and i went back to the rural area again where i am happily living now i am not here to play this and that game with you i am not going to ask whether you are a coffee person or a tea person beaches or mountains rural areas or urban areas no but what concerns me the most is the changing land use pattern and migration of people from rural areas to urban areas india is a country of villages about 75% of its population still resides in the rural areas when i asked you many of you said at some point of your life either you or your parents have migrated to the urban areas this puts immense pressure on the urban ecosystems also every geographical land has a carrying capacity beyond which it cannot sustain simultaneously what happens to the land that you leave behind it's either abandoned or sold off to so called developmental projects like quarries clearly india being a country of villages grapples with this issues of migration changing land use pattern and rural unemployment we clearly need more young people to stay back in the villages and how do we do that the answer to that is rural entrepreneurship my name is tapan choudhary and i am a rural entrepreneur confused how this solves the issue of migration confused how this solves the issue let me explain with my own unique approach to it back in my hometown boldi i run an experiential sustainable tourism place when we say experiential tourism it means much more than just bed and breakfast people come there to experience local culture to experience the local art local food to explore the biodiversity people don't just check in and check out of places they experience the whole area and how does one set up their own experiential tourism business especially in rural india what all facilities do you require honestly not much all you have to do is take advantage of your surroundings yes there i said it take advantage of your surroundings let me illustrate this a bit further when people visit my farm they ask me where is the swimming pool so i take them into the mountains right behind my farm we go for a small hike observe some local biodiversity learn few tricks from the jungle and eventually we reach to this beautiful natural water body where people can take a dip into the water and why do you need the swimming pool for after dinner at night time there are no fancy amenities there is no television there is no air conditioning in the eco structures that we have built so i take people out in the fields thankfully we live in a rural area where there is no atmospheric pollution or light pollution and the skies are very clear we do some stargazing people lie down in the field we observe some constellations and why do you need the television for guys it's 2024 and people don't travel for fancy amenities that they already have at the comfort of their homes people travel for genuine authentic experiences when people visit my farm we try to serve them with local delicacies and in order to prepare these local delicacies we have to source these ingredients from local farmers not some supermarket and ingredients like banana flowers or moringa leaves who knows their way around these ingredients not some chef from delhi but it's going to be your local neighborhood ladies so by trying to be genuinely local your business automatically becomes sustainable you don't even have to try hard when we talk about sustainable tourism it stands on three pillars environmental social and economical also known as planet people and profit thankfully people have started to understand the environmental aspect of it where they try to travel consciously 
they travel responsibly, try to minimize their carbon footprint, try not to litter. But they often overlook another important aspect of sustainable tourism, which is the social aspect. My farm is located in a Warli tribal locality, where Warli people reside. Warli community is famously known for their Warli paintings and Tarpa folk dance. Some German tourists had visited my farm, so I took the liberty of taking them into the village where there was a local ceremony going on. The Germans were really fascinated by the fact that they saw rich culture, they were observing the rituals, they were clicking pictures and asking questions. They were clearly fascinated by it. But the best part was that the tribals were also fascinated. The tribals were fascinated by the fact that some people came all the way from Germany and are getting fascinated by their own culture. This not only provides them monetary benefits, but it makes sure that they take pride in their own culture, which is very important as rural communities often consider themselves inferior to the urban communities. They think their lifestyles and their practices are inferior to that of urban people. Now, this is an image of a Warli hut, which is made out of locally sourced uh, uh, carvey wood and the flooring is done by cow dung. The roof is thatched. This is a climatically responsive structure which can withstand heavy monsoon as well as stay cool during the hot summers. But for some reason, they believe that this concrete building is better than what they live in. So by doing sustainable tourism, by making sure that there is a positive interaction between the tourists and the local communities, we can make sure that they take pride in their own culture, which in turn will help us in protecting and preserving their traditional knowledge, their art and their craft. Talking about another important aspect of sustainable tourism, where all the three pillars combine. I'll give you another example of the Warli tribe. Warli tribals are good hunters. And in order to be a good hunter, you have to be an excellent observer of nature. These Warli people, they carry a slingshot, which they call it a bechki in their local language, and they hunt birds with it. They already have a good traditional knowledge of how to spot the birds. All we did was we gave them some bird guide books. We made sure that they knew the vernacular names. They knew the Marathi names of the birds. Now the same people who used to hunt birds are working as our bird guides, are taking our guests on bird watching trails. Here you can see the magic of sustainable tourism, where when we make sure that all the three pillars combine, we can do environmental conservation, in this case by saving birds. We made sure that the social aspect is taken care of by involving local communities and their traditional knowledge. And of course, we were able to generate income for them. In order to make sure that sustainable tourism is practiced in the right manner, we have to take a strategic approach. We have to focus on the destination as a whole. Rural India serves as an excellent destination for experiential sustainable tourism. In rural India, across 100 kilometers, there is a change in dialect. And along with that, there is a change in culture. There's a change in biodiversity. There's a change in landscape, which means a sustainable tourism business in Maharashtra is always going to be different to that in rural Meghalaya or to that in coastal Kerala. No two sustainable tourism businesses are going to be similar. And people who care for unique experiences will satisfy when they visit the rural India as they'll have a very diverse experience every time they visit a village. But in order to make sure that we do this strategically and we uh, make sure that the sustainable tourism is done properly, all the stakeholders are involved, we can do this simple exercise. You all can do this with your own village. In this case, we can do a SWOT analysis. I'm giving you an example of my own village that is Boldi, where the strains are cultural diversity, biodiversity, and Chiku farms. The weaknesses are capacity building of local authorities, lack of public infrastructure for tourism. The opportunity could be that Mumbai airport being near, there is a huge potential for foreign tourism. Threats are upcoming developmental projects, unsustainable, unplanned, resource-intensive resorts. Once we figure this out, we can then market our strengths, eliminate our weaknesses, 
work on the opportunities and try to minimize the threats. A sustainable tourism project should be the reflection of the village itself. In case of a farm stay, you don't need any kind of a landscaping. Your farm itself serves as the background where you can invite people to experience this farm life and at the same time sell your farm produce to those same people. So both your farm and your tourism project work hand in hand. They only complement each other. So to conclude, by promoting rural entrepreneurship through different channels like sustainable tourism, we can make sure that we hold this migration from rural areas to urban areas. We can make sure that more and more, more, and more young people stay back in the rural areas. Now, migration per se is not undesirable, but it shouldn't happen for the reason of employment. In fact, a scenario like this could be created where people from cities and towns move to the rural areas in realization of better opportunities and a healthier lifestyle there. Of course, there are some pros and cons of living in the rural India. And it was a big decision for me as well to move there and spend the rest of my life there. So how did I take this decision? Actually, I was in Pune doing my masters. I was doing my masters in Pune. So I met across a lot of people in their 40s and 50s. And through different conversations with them, I figured out one common thing that all of them mentioned. Every one of them, after retiring, wanted to have their own little farm, grow some veggies, breathe in fresh air, and live a stress-free life in the rural areas. So I realized people migrate from rural areas to urban areas in search of a better lifestyle. They enter into the rat race, climb the corporate ladder, only to eventually dream of moving back to the rural areas. So I thought to myself, why not start now? Why not get 30 years ahead of time? And why not start now? So to all the young people who are sitting out here, why not start now? Thank you. Thank you so much.